Hi. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, today, I'm so excited. We have uh, Chelsea Dinsmore. Hi, Chelsea. Hello. <laughs> Uh, it, it's so great to see you. It's so great to have you. Um, can you just share a bit about yourself? Tell people what you do, tell, you know, who you are? Absolutely. Um, so I am Chelsea. I like to consider myself a citizen of the world. Um, I'm constantly trotting the globe um, all around. I'm actually currently in Scotland at the moment. Um, and I also um, run a business as the Chief Inspiration Officer for Live Your Legend. And Live Your Legend is a company that helps people to find and do work that they love. Um, we have an online platform, but in the process of building the business, we also realized how important it is to have in-person connection and that support um, as you're kind of going down your path of discovery. So we also have um, in-person communities in nearly 250 cities all around the world. So I actually will be meeting with the Glasgow group um, on Thursday of this week. So that's one of the things that I do enjoy doing on my travels is meeting up with uh, the local communities that we have all around the world. So that's sort of me in a nutshell at the moment. I love the citizen of the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all are, but um, I just choose to actually leverage, <laughs> leverage that quite a bit. Yeah, that's amazing. So, um, and c can you tell us a bit about your story of how you became the chief inspiration officer for Live Your Legend? Because absolutely, um, yeah. So, um, Live Your Legend was actually founded by my husband Scott, who um, unfortunately was in an accident in September of 2015. Um, and so, after his passing, I kind of took the reins. We sort of the business was sort of co-created because I was there throughout the entire process of you know what as he was growing it, starting it, all of it. Um, I was really his only voice. Um, his only team member for a long time. So uh, thankfully, I feel very blessed that I was um, so involved in our marriage and just in what was he was interested in because what that allowed me to do is um, to really know about the business, even though I didn't actually officially work for Live Your Legend prior to September, um, I kind of was able to step in and take over. I wouldn't say it was graceful, um, but I've been able to do it because, you know, like I said, I, throughout the process of it being built and whatnot, um, I kind of had some good insight into how he made decisions, what mattered most to him, sort of what, you know, the mission and vision behind Live Your Legend that is not seen just on the, on the outside. So um, that is really how I ended up where I am today. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's, that's some really incredible, I mean, it's an incredible story, but it's an incredible thing to, um, to do. Um, and some, some of the people watching will probably think, you know, I, I'm really struggling in my life and I, I really don't know how to not struggle or, you know, and it's just kind of like part of their life almost. And, and some might not even have that awareness. So how did you overcome like, I mean, that's a huge event that you were able to overcome. So what, what did you do to, to actually overcome that? Yeah, well, you know, it's actually very timely. Um, I just, on, I love planes and it's a very creative space for me. So um, actually, I just on a plane ride over last night to, to hear, wrote a post all about, it'll be on Live Your Legend, all about um, how to move forward when you don't know how. Because, you know, I, I was faced with a situation where I truly didn't know, I don't know how I've done anything that I've done in the last 10 months. I mean, if someone literally 10 months ago, if someone would have said like, Chelsea, this is what your life is going to look like. And this is all the things that you're going to have done. I would have said just absolutely no, no, like I, I could never do that. So um, anyway, so this is very timely because I did just kind of organize my thoughts around this. Um, and I think there's a couple of main things was um, one for me is, you know, I actually didn't even know that I was going to necessarily be the one to carry on the mission and vision of Liver Legend. It was, you know, I was dealing with so much personally and I just, I didn't know, but 
what happened was these small little steps just started to unfold. So that community that I mentioned that's all around the world, um, you know, after the accident happened, they just had this tremendous outpouring of support to me. I mean, I got emails and letters and just, I mean, I had to go away for a whole weekend to read all the tributes that were written to Scott in his honor and all the messages that were written to me. So in that, I just felt, because they were giving so much, I felt compelled to give back. And so I wrote, um, you know, I, start, I wrote an article. I had never written an article for Living Legend, but I just did it because I was compelled to return the love that I was receiving. And then we decided to do, you know, we held a memorial for Scott in San Francisco, but at the same time, um, I thought doing a global memorial among all the communities would be cool. So in that, I filmed a video which once again I had never filmed a video before really but it was just I was so compelled so it wasn't like it wasn't there wasn't a moment of decision I would say as from the business side where I was like okay I'm gonna do this it was almost just that like I was leading so much with love and not with logic like my head would have told me Chelsea, you don't know how to film a video. Chelsea, you don't know how to write an article. But instead, I was just like, I was compelled from this greater place of giving. Um, so that's a big thing for me is I think over the past 10 months, um, I've always kind of lived my life very intuitively based on feelings versus thoughts. But that is something I've worked really, really hard on over the past 10 months is to just like, let my head go and let my heart lead. So that's one big thing for me. I think another thing too is focusing on the next smallest step. Like when I, you know, for those that don't know, um, we were summiting um, Mount Kilimanjaro and there was um, a rock fall and that was um, how Scott was killed. And, you know, I think it's an interesting metaphor because sometimes we look like when we're looking at the mountain, right? Like a mountain that we're gonna climb or something. We look at the top of the mountain. That is so hard to imagine. But if you can just look at like the trail in front of you, you look at the very smallest next step. Like, I mean, I think back to the beginning months, like the first two months were um, just, you know, I, I truly was like not a human. I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping. I was just, you know basically trying to survive and that was what I needed to do then it was just what can I do to make it through today and like I found small little tactics like for me I'm really into yoga and so like doing something that I felt good at you know felt really good um so it was just the smallest next steps and honestly that has truly what I've done in running the business is, you know, I can't, I can't think about the big picture of my life. I, I literally have no idea what my life is going to look like in a year, in five years. I have zero idea because the picture that I had is not there anymore, but I can't look at that. I look at today. So presence helps. Um, leading with love helps. I think um, another thing that has helped me not get stuck is um, really to recognize the impermanence of um, any given moment. So like I, um, I spend quite a bit of time on my own just because I run the business on my own. I, um, you know, I do a lot of traveling, like I mentioned, and all my friends have kids and all this stuff. And so I end up doing a lot of that alone, um, which that number one is a great skill to have to be able to be by yourself and be comfortable and content, I think truly is a skill that everyone should develop because it then makes everything else around you an added bonus. Like you, if you can find true joy and inner peace, everything else in your life is just extra. It's abundance. And so thankfully, Scott and I did a lot of long distance before we were married. And so I think I developed that skill prior to all of this. Um, but I've had to obviously hone it down more. But that was a tangent. Um, but the other thing is, um, like I was saying, was to recognize the impermanence of the situation. So 
I'd be lying if I didn't admit, as much as I am comfortable being alone, like I would be lying if I didn't admit that there's times where I get lonely. I'm, you know, I'm used to having someone there to share with and just that person. And so, um, but if I were to get stuck there, you know, if, if any given moment I'm feeling that and I were to project that current state to my future state, that's how you just get stuck. That's how you get paralyzed. So to recognize that in any given moment, feelings are fleeting. Like, and I'm, I mean, I think that's important for the negative ones, but also like to remember like the positive ones, like, you know, I think you can, you can find gratitude in any given moment. You can flip a switch of how you feel by changing your focus in an instant. So those are a couple of tips. I have a few more, um, but those are a couple of the tips that have really just, I have done things over the past 10 months that I just like, I never could have imagined doing. And I think that really it kind of encompasses those three things. It kind of encompasses how I've, how I've done it, I guess. <laughs> oh, and I love it. I, I, I think it's absolutely extraordinary that you have done all of that. So, and, and you talk about um, sort of switching your focus and, and letting, which I absolutely love. And I, I, you know, I do this work with um, my clients all the time about, you know, I call it sort of if, if we had a container or a jar of, of emotions, um, if we keep filling up the jar and then it gets, you know, <laughs> it gets full and then we can't add anything else. It's kind of like, well, we have to let it go if it, it come into the jar, but we have to like keep it, you know, let it go. So what, are, what's the, the thing, how, what's your sort of um, strategy for allowing those um, feelings to be um, fleeting and for them not to get stuck? Because, you know, getting stuck, the, those feelings, if they get stuck, they cause all sorts of problems, health, you know, whatever. You know, yeah. <laughs> So well, I think it comes down to a couple of things. Um, one, I think that in any given moment, at, I mean, one, it starts with just recognizing that you have the choice. You know, I think a lot of us feel victims to kind of what happens to us and our feelings and the emotions that come up. But the moment that you recognize that you have the choice in how in what you're choosing to focus on, which then translates to your feelings, your feelings translates to your actions, you know, it's all of this. So for me, I, and I've said this a million times on Live Your Legend, but it's worth repeating, is that in any given moment, we have the choice to look at what we do have or what we don't. Yes. We really do. And yes, is there a tremendous, huge part of my life that I thought was going to be there that's not? Absolutely. But I also have, I'm still so blessed in my life. I have a support system. I have a healthy body. I have gifts. I have, I'm here, you know, and like I'm very connected to nature. And so when I step outside, I just recognize that there is so much of abundance around. There's so much beauty in this world even in the midst of a tragedy. So I think that the moment you can shift your focus, like what that does for me is, I mean, I, I truly believe that gratitude is my greatest gift um, because I think that if you can find gratitude, even in the most difficult times, and the way you do that is to focus on what you have versus what you don't, um, that you will find peace and contentment even when things don't make sense. So focus is huge, but then I think another thing too is to, it kind of gets back to what I was saying before about the impermanence and a way that I have have found to um, kind of attach a, a non-permanence to a feeling or emotion is to be endlessly curious. Um, so when something comes up, um, you know, I, I'll admit I've been blindsided by a lot of just feelings that I, I had never felt before or things come up. I'm kind of think I'm in like a groove and then something comes up and it, I really feel like I'm like literally getting like punched sideways about something. And I'll admit, like I have had this with most, like in the beginning it was all negative stuff, but I've had it with positive feelings too, which is a whole separate topic of, you know, going through grief, but still feeling good and all that stuff. Yeah. But when anytime anything comes up, I 
I am curious about it. You know, I don't say, oh my gosh, like I'm feeling guilty or whatever it may be. I don't say that. I say, huh, what does this feeling mean? Like, what could this, what else could this mean? Where could this be coming from? What could I do um, maybe to feel differently? Like, it's not that I attach it to like what is, it's that I'm curious about it. And I think the more you can stay curious in life in general, life becomes an experiment and you release expectations in that. You know, like I no longer, like no joke, like I no longer walk into any given day expecting like anything it, because it's just like the, the more you can let go of expectations and like accept what is in this moment and kind of just approach it with curiosity. I think that that's how you find flow. Like, you know, that's how you're constantly in motion, whether and talking back and forth and learning and growing instead of being kind of just stuck and paralyzed in one place. Yeah. Oh my goodness. There's so many amazing things <laughs> you just said. <laughs> I have done a lot of inward looking. I've done a lot. You know, people say, oh, Tulsi, you're strong. And I'm like, no, I work really, really hard. Like I have worked really hard. Like prior to this, I have always done self work. Um, and then even more so the past, you know, nine and a half months, I've, I've really truly dedicated myself to growth and learning. And um, I can say that that has served me tremendously through this process. And, and what I absolutely love about um, what you've done and who you are is the fact that you're so human and like you just really put it out there. It's so beautiful. Uh, it's like truly amazing. <laughs> I've actually had uh, goosebumps while you were, you were saying all these things. Um, so I was telling someone the other day um, in an email, I was like, I don't think I know how to be anything other than totally vulnerable. Like, I, I mean, I, does it scare me? Yeah. Like, does it scare me to write posts and put my heart on the table or to, you know, come and talk about all this kind of stuff? But I guess my thought is that if I can help even one person by sharing my story and my fears and my all of it, then that's worth it to me, you know? Yeah, because I mean, and some people are so overcome by the shame and the fear and the guilt. And so what would you say to them about them sharing their story? Or mm -hmm. maybe how it's, it's, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say how it helped you because I mean, it, it almost seems evident, but yeah, sure. Maybe how it's helped you or how they can sort of use that shame, guilt, fear, whatever to, to elevate themselves and get unstuck. Yeah. Well, you know, that's one of the things that I've, um, that's been huge for me is I've done a lot of things that have scared me over the last nine months because everything is scary. Like, Everything that I do for the first time feels like a first. Like the first time I went out to dinner by myself, the first trip I went on, the first, literally like, you know, and I'm still, it hasn't been a year yet. I'm still not through the milestones. Our anniversary, our marriage anniversary would be next month and, and the anniversary of his passing. So like I've done all of these first, his birthday, my birthday, all of this stuff. And I show up places that he used to go to and, so it's all really scary, but I think the thing that I have recently realized is the fear never goes away. So for example, I, um, you know, I gave a, a speech at his uh, memorial service and honestly, like aside from what I needed to do to get down the mountain and to get home from Africa after the accident, like speaking at his memorial service was probably one of the hardest things I've. I mean, if not like the hardest thing I've ever done. So you would think like that any speech after that is going to be like, oh my God, so easy, right? Well, I, I gave a speech back in August at a seminar about like living life on purpose. I was so nervous. I was so scared beforehand. And like, as I said, as I've seen this fear continue to come up, regardless of whether or not I've done it before, or, you know, I think I am in the, under the belief that like, I've probably hopefully done the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. And so you would think like, oh, nothing's scary anymore. 
but it's not fear doesn't go away and I think that's the, the point is people often want these emotions they want to eliminate them but I think the point is not to eliminate them but rather to learn how to navigate them mm -hmm. um, because they're gonna come up so why are you trying to make them go away because they're most likely going to come up it's not that no one has any fear or any shame or any guilt or whatever other emotions you were mentioning it's just learning how to manage them in a resourceful way um and for me like i just i i reframe fear now like i feel it in my stomach and uh, but i also feel excitement in my stomach and getting back to focus so it physiologically, I feel those two in a similar way. Um, and the only difference is the story that my head is saying about the outcome. One I'm looking forward to, one I'm not. So which one am I going to focus on? You know? And so that's like, it's, I think that your mind is a muscle and the more that you learn how to strengthen it and learn how to manage it, the better you just start to get at kind of reacting to life and what it hands you and all of that stuff. Okay. I mean, I, I think this is absolutely amazing. And yeah. so I, some people might say, oh yeah, you know, maybe, maybe I had a really bad childhood in my, you know, in my family, we never talked about anything or we, you know, people didn't, weren't allowed to have feelings or whatever. So is that, is that your, I mean, did, did you come from an amazing family that had amazing communication skills that taught you <laughs> how to like <laughs> show your feelings? Like, is that your story? Is that your background? Well, I think my family is amazing. Um, but I would not say that I had this picture perfect life and childhood, um, not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I think that that's where, you know, we all have the choice to write our own stories and you have seen examples of both. Like there's examples of people who have truly experienced the exact same situation and they respond to it differently. So I don't think it's has anything to do necessarily. I don't want to discount people who are going through challenging times, but I think the moment that you decide that you have the choice to write your own story, that's where the power comes in. Because, I mean, there are stories of people who have been through horrific, horrific things and have still managed to find beauty in it. Mm -hmm. And there's people who have been through not so bad things and only find evil and ugliness. So in my opinion, it's not what is on the outside it's not what happens it's not the external factors it really starts with managing what's inside of you mm -hmm. and the moment that you the moment that you choose to take responsibility for that you are no longer a victim to anything in your life uh, so good so so <laughs> so you know obviously one of one of the things that um I try and help people with, as, as you do with uh, Livia Lundin, is really helping people get to sort of the core of what they do and, and to, to really be their true authentic selves. Um, and um, so, you know, people can realize, oh, you know, I'm really great at, you know, this thing, whatever this thing is, right? And then they realize, but there's so many people in the world who are already doing that. Mm. So, what, so what are your thoughts on, but there's so many people already doing that. I'll call it an excuse because, because um, you know, what else could it be? Um, so what would you say to that? Well, I'll start with the, the kind of like being authentic self because I think that it sounds so easy to just say, you know, but people are like, well, how do I be me, right? And that where I think, a big a big part of that is like i said i think the more time that you spend alone and i i recognize i am like i am a social bee like it's not that i spend all my time alone or people should go and do you know 50 day meditation retreats or anything like that but what i'm saying is that when you spend like we spend so much time these days with constant like distraction or you know constant like 
we look at our phones. We can't even sit at the stoplight anymore without like looking at our phones. You know, we just need this sort of, we've become addicted to having outside sources of, you know, whether that's just entertainment or even gratification, like, you know, social media, it's, you want to check it and I'm guilty. Like you want to check it because you want to be like, Oh, did somebody like what I had to share? You know? So, but the more time that you can, I think, be by yourself, one, I think you really start to listen to that voice inside. And I think that is why some people have a hard time being alone is because sometimes the voice inside of you is the voice that's telling you to go on a different path. You know, like, I'm not really happy at my job that I'm supposed to be doing, even though when I tell other people about it, they're all excited about it. Like, what's wrong with me? You know, those are the kinds of thoughts that start to go in your head. So I think that's a great skill to, to be able to be alone, to listen to your thoughts. And then like I was getting back to earlier, listening more to your gut than your head. Because like this is a small example um, that I shared at that talk I was mentioning. That um, So every morning um, I take a cold shower. And the reason that I do that is because every morning, no joke, I've done this for I don't know, four years, three years, every morning my head says, oh, maybe tomorrow's another day or like a better day to do this or it's going to be so cold, don't do it. But then every day that I do it, I remind my mind that I can do things that I don't think I can do. So I think that listening to your intuition is listening to that thought or, I mean, it's hard to say. I do think like your heart's language is feelings and your head's language is thought. So it's kind of, it's kind of a gray area, but like listening to that thing that comes up before your head starts to kick in. Like, for example, this morning, one, one way that I practice this is I, every time I get to a new city, I love to go on a run with absolutely no agenda. And where I think that starts to practice my intuition is, you know, I'll go down a street and I'll look right and I'll be like, I really feel like going that way for no reason. There's no reason at all. Like, but if I were to be following a map or a route, like that's totally my head, right? So that's one way I really think to get into your authentic self is to literally start to hear the voice that pops up before your head starts to kick in and either your head will talk you out of anything. Um, so that being said, being the authentic self, um, actually, I think I, I lost track on the, origi the original question because I put <laughs> well, on that tab. Yeah, no, it's just stuff. about how, like, what if people say, oh, this has already been done, like it's okay. been done a hundred right. times or whatever. Yes. Um, so one thing that I think is really, really cool is that um, there is exactly one version of you on this planet whoever's listening to this. And literally, like if you think about that, there's 7.4 billion people on this planet. Not a single person is made up exactly how you are. Even like twins, you know, there's these subtle genetic differences and whatnot. So, and even with twins, like there's, your life experience is unlike any others. The way that you perceive situations, the things that you've been through, the, the, the things that you can give are so different than anyone else. And so I think to recognize that is one, a form of empowerment. Like we all truly have something unique to offer. And that's where I think when we start to look at things like competitors, I actually really don't like the word competition because I don't think that anyone and in sports and stuff, it's good to have that motivation, whatever. But um, like in terms of a business, you know, that you're pursuing, if there's somewhere, someone out there that's doing that already, I see that as a sign that there's a market for it. <laughs> so bring your own unique talent, your own special twist, your own, we all have a voice, like bring your own voice to that thing because they've already done the hard work to prove that there's a market. So I would almost encourage you to appreciate them instead of, you know, look at them as a reason to stop. And once again, I actually wrote a whole post on reframing competition that's on Live Your Legend um, and why competitors are actually your best teachers. So I encourage you guys, if that's where you're stuck right now, I encourage you guys to check out that post on Live Your Legend. I love it. I love it. So do you think people can follow the, the like, it, you know, they, they can build or follow a wrong, the wrong dream? And if so, what would that look like? 
I'm a big believer uh, that there are no bad decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are only decisions that uh, cause you to learn things you maybe otherwise would not have. Um, so that being said, mm -hmm. I think that every step is a necessary step because it's equally as important to know what you don't like as it is to know what you do. So my, my path um, has been, you know, some might say it's been kind of all over the place. I was a nutritional counselor. I taught yoga. I, at one point, was doing some food blogging stuff. Am I doing the food blogging anymore? No. But was that a necessary step for me to understand what I wanted? Yeah. And did I gain some transferable skills out of it? I did because... I know how to manage WordPress, which I do now at Live Your Legend. I also, you know, I took that into a skill set that I used at a previous job where I was managing a fitness company because I learned a lot about photography and I learned about Photoshop. And so do I, yes, am I not doing that anymore? Do I see it as a failure? No. I see it as feedback about that was not working for me. And I, you know, there's a laundry list of reasons why it wasn't working for me, one of which was the best lighting in San Francisco was at like 3 p.m. And I literally didn't enjoy making dinner at 3 p.m. to take photographs of it, <laughs> you know? So it's just, but it wasn't, I see every step as a necessary step because I think the more you know about what you, if you only know what you do like, I think you're limiting yourself. I think it's really also as equally important to know what you don't like. Yeah. And is there such a thing as the right or wrong time for things? Ah, oh, we could talk all about time. <laughs> um, you know, I, quite honestly, I think time is an illusion. Um, I think that as long as you're following what's exciting to you in the moment, then you're on the right path. Um, I, I have many thoughts about time. Um, you know, there's many things that have happened over the past 10 months where I'm like, holy moly, like that timing was just like spot on. So I don't know. I think that in a way, I think that kind of taps into whatever your spiritual beliefs are about what the universe brings you and all of that stuff. Um, but no, I think for someone to say I'm not ready or, I, you know, it's just not the right time. Are we ever ready for anything? Yeah. Are we ever fully ready for anything? You know, I mean, I've seen this with many of my friends that have kids, you know, it's like, are you ever really ready <laughs> for that? Like, I, I personally don't know. I don't have any children, but, you know, I don't know if you're ever ready, right? Because part of the lesson is getting outside of your comfort zone. So I, I think somewhat people use that as an excuse. Like I'm just, I don't have the skill set yet. I'm not ready yet. Um, I don't know. I think that maybe I would encourage them to kind of take a leap of faith instead of <laughs> yeah. waiting to be ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and what are your thoughts on, on perfection? Because, you know, not only do people say, well, this is maybe not the right time or I'm not ready or I need another course or I need something else in addition. Um, but then they, they start doing it. It has to be perfect. Like, what are your thoughts about perfection? <laughs> I think the only perfect action is imperfect action, to be honest. Uh, yeah. So perfect example of this is I, um, I recently did something I never thought that I was capable of doing, which was um, launching a course at Live Your Legend. We launched a course called 21 Days to Discover Your Passion recently. It's a 21-day like module-based course that helps guide you through this discovery process. Something I never thought that I was capable of creating, but um, there was just such a need for it. The community was asking for it. And so I was like, you know what? I've, I've kind of like created and then or I've discovered and then rediscovered my passion. So let's take a step back and like look at my process through that. And so I found myself procrastinating, <laughs> as many do when things are challenging. But what I did was getting back to like just the small steps. I was like, okay, I'm going to create a deadline. And so I did, which didn't go according to plan because nothing goes according to our plan. Um, but, you know, that was my first step. And then it was just 
taking the step of maybe creating an outline. And then it was, you know, recognizing my procrastination and locking myself in a space that was literally distraction free so that I could create it. But what, what the beautiful thing about it is, is in taking that first step, it created the product because if I would have waited until I knew exactly what it was going to look like, it never would have been created. And that's the thing is, is I think people think that things need to be perfect. The course is not perfect. We're getting feedback, we're modifying, we're adjusting. But I think the, the thing to recognize is oftentimes, especially entrepreneurs, I'll, I'll touch on that topic, is they want to create something that they think people need. But you have no idea what anyone needs until something's out there and you start to get feedback on it. Mm -hmm. So the more you can just put stuff out there, that's the imperfect action. Like put it out there, see what people think, see how it did resonate, see how it didn't resonate. Once again, the more data points that you can gather, the closer it's going to hone in on. So I'm a big believer. We talk about this a lot at Live Your Legend that clarity, which some would might call the perfection, clarity only comes once the momentum has started. So for that course, for example, did it end up looking different than my outline? Totally. But I only started to get that the pieces fit together by putting one piece down. You know, it's like a puzzle. Like you only start to recognize where the pieces should go once you start it. And so I think perfection is just a complete myth. I think it's a huge barrier that a lot of people um, come up against. And I think the more that you can just let go of that idea of perfection, because nothing's freaking perfect, then, you know, and I also reckon that getting to your point about what people are saying about, oh, I need a little bit more, you know, skill in this, or I need a little bit more knowledge. 10 months ago, I was not a writer. Do I write every week now? Yeah. Do some people resonate with my writing? Yeah. Do others not? Yeah. But I was not a writer until I put a pen to a paper or a finger to a keyboard, actually. But, you know, I mean, so, and that's happened with a lot of people. Like, I, you know, were you an interviewer before you did your first interview? No. Mm -hmm. um, so it's almost like we have, we have the ability to create the skills and especially this day and age, you know, you can learn anything online. I learned Photoshop online. I learned photography online. I learned everything online. Like you don't need these for certain things, obviously, you know, and these need a, a degree, but certain things you just don't need all of this, um, all these credentials that people let yeah. stop them. You know, well, and, and it's, it, that's a very, very interesting point because I would even say, you know, actually I've said this for years and years and years, you know, wherever you are in your life, just have a look at what you think is real or true about your life. And now think about if you lived in a remote tribe in Africa, would that still be real and true? <laughs> so, you know, and so even I would say, being being a doctor or a surgeon it varies from you know one country to the other so you know the, the the reality is very very different from one country to the other so you're absolutely right in that people make up and i, I love i love it because they make up their own stories and so it's like and know. perspective is huge too like um, that's been one of my favorite things about travel is, and I'm fully addicted to it, <laughs> is the perspective that you gain because it is so easy to sit and think that our life is about our life, but the more that you can start, that I believe that you can start to recognize, like, we're all connected, like, and that some people that sounds really super esoteric and what are you talking about? But we are, we're all humans. And if you can look at your community as humanity instead of, you know, the community here in Edinburgh or whatever it is, or your little family or whatever it is, if you can start to recognize that we're all in this together, I think that the power that gives you one to, to create that momentum that I was talking about is huge because when you come from a place of wanting to give and serve, you will keep going. 
if you come from a place of wanting to gain and receive, you'll find yourself stopping because we will do, I think it's in our human nature to do so much more for others than we'll do for ourselves. Like if you're thinking of starting a business and you want to do it to, um, say you make 500 K, you know, that's your goal. I want to make half a million dollars. Um, when you find that half million dollars, maybe you could set a new goal, but that doesn't do anything to empower you the way you will feel when you receive, you know, that, that talking about feeling fleeting feelings, like the moment of achievement is so fleeting. Like you reach a goal, you feel good about it. And then you're lucky if three months later, you still feel that way. The feeling of fulfillment is literally everlasting. Like to receive an email from someone, I mean, it literally like brings me, like gets me emotional. Like to receive an email from someone that says like, Chelsea, this course like is the first time in my life I feel like I have permission to believe that something is possible. Or like when I get an email about like a post that I write and they're like, Chelsea, like your, you know, your words like made me think differently. Like those are the things that cause me to want to show up every single day. It's not a sale of a course, like that goes away so fast. But to know that you can help people and you want to help people and the more you can lead from that place, like you will continue to do things you never thought that you could do because that, I believe that's what we're here for. I believe that all of us are here to keep this species alive. And so perspective is so, so huge. The more you can get out of your bubble and start to think of yourself as a citizen of the world, as I said, <laughs> um, I think your motivation, you, you empower yourself in tremendous ways. Well, I, you know, I, I for one, uh, totally think that you help inspire and empower others through what you do. It's uh, absolutely amazing. Um, what you've said is absolutely spot on. Uh, I mean, so many things you, you've said that that have been extraordinary. And, and I think that anybody who's listening will get, you know, so much out of this conversation. And it's, I think, you know, it shows your generosity and your commitment to really making this world a better place really shows. So thank you so, so much. Um, is there one last thing that you want to sort of share with people? Like, did, did, like if there's one thing they have to do, it would be what to get unstuck <laughs> or what to like. Um, well, themselves. I think that I'll say two things. Um, the, the thing that you just said about um, leaving the world a better place. Um, and that was, you know, going through what I went through and am going through, um, I think that one of the things that I've had to do is to kind of like redefine, you know, why am I here? Um, because we, we go down, you know, paths and we kind of get in our ways and we do things like that. And so I had to really seriously sit down and like ask myself, like, why am I here? Like, why do I want to be here? Because that was, you know, it was, it was, I was very challenged for, <laughs> for a few months there. Um, and I think that one of the things that I came up with is that I think all of us can leave the world a better place. And like, sometimes it's like, oh, people think so big and broad of like changing the world. Like one of my favorite things to do is to walk into a coffee shop or a restaurant or a store and simply share a smile. Like I'll walk in, I come in with energy. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And you know, that is leaving the world a better place. So we all have the ability to do that. And I've made a very active commitment that I don't know how many days I'm going to be on this planet. None of us do. Um, but I really, I believe that I'm here to leave the world just a tiny bit better each and every day I'm in it. Even if that's just sharing a smile, it doesn't need to be all inspirational post or video or whatever it is. Like every one of us has the opportunity to make someone feel a little bit better. So that's huge. And then for people that really feel stuck and we promote this like 
so much at Live Your Legend is to get your surroundings right. Because the process of doing things differently isn't easy, you know, and to, to expect, getting back to expectations, expect it to be easy. You're just going to set yourself up for disappointment. Um, people are going to question you. People are going to be afraid that as you change, they're going to lose you. So you need to have a community of support that believes in the same things that you do, that believes that it doesn't have to be one way. You know, if you hang out all day with people who hate their jobs, you're going to think it's totally normal to hate your job. And sadly, a lot of people hate their jobs. But if you hang out with people that are doing, you know, empowering things, and I have this just amazing community of these online entrepreneurs that inspire me every day with what's possible. And that makes me want to be bigger and better and grow as a person and all of that. So to get around people that believe in what you believe in is super important. And that's why we've created Live Your Legend Local, which are completely, completely free communities um, that are all around the world because it's a platform that you walk into this room and you know that these people also want to be spending their time doing the things that they love because that's like the foundation of Live Your Legend is we really believe that if people spent more time doing things that they love that the world would be an altogether different place because if you're pissed and frustrated and miserable at work, you bring that home. You bring that to the restaurant, you know, waitress. Like, but if you're kind of inspired and passionate and feeling alive, you also bring that. So that's really why we do what we do. So I think the, the quickest way to change things in your life is to at least get some people around you regularly that um, will help lift you up instead of bringing you down. So we're really huge on community at Live Your Legend. Love it. So is, is having an amazing, happy, wonderful life possible? <laughs> I believe it is. Um, I think that I think anybody in any given moment has everything they need right now to be fully happy. I think you have everything you need inside of you to be completely content. You just, once I, like I said earlier, you have to know how to manage it, how to manage what happens around you in a resourceful way. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that happiness not spent today is not more happiness tomorrow. I think it's all there. I think it's all within you. And it's you just learning to navigate the path to tap into it. Amazing. <laughs> well I can talk about this stuff all day long <laughs> and I'd love to I'd love to <laughs> well and it's, it's literally been an honor and an absolute pleasure for for me to have this conversation with you Chelsea um I really from the bottom of my heart thank you for everything you do for who you are and how you show up in this world it's fantastic just keep being amazing and keep being yourself Thank you so much. Well, it, it is truly my pleasure to be asked to be here. So thank you. And thank you for what you're doing and sharing all of this amazingness with the world. And I'll be sure to share this with our community at Live Your Legend as well. So okay. thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.